disappointing. So, there we go. Yeah. Well, that's because I was doing it. It was I'm just getting the next guy on in. Hey, everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. Michelle Alcorn here, president of Euro Centers Atlantic Canada and uh, People Plan Connect, my podcast. And we're going to be cooking with uh, guests from all over the world. Very excited about today. My mom's here. And as always, uh, my biggest fan and sous chef and assistant. But today, say hi, mom. Hi, folks. Hi, folks. <laughs> Nobody's here but you and I just yet, but that's okay. Oh. Everybody will be joining in. The meeting starts at 10, so, but I should be seeing these people coming in. So we're getting ready to uh, join with some guests from Ireland, Vietnam, Chile, Lunenburg, Nova Scotia, and uh, I think some guests from Australia. And we're just looking forward to it. Hello. Hey. Hi, am I the first one here? I think so. Ah. Good morning, Helen. How are you today? Good morning, Donna. I'm good, thank you. How are you? Not bad. <clears throat> the weather's beautiful. It is. Yeah. A chill in the air. <laughs> yeah, it's starting to feel like that, isn't it? A little crisp. A little crisp. <laughs> That's it. Marcel says she can't get in. I couldn't get in the first time either because I tried the link in the, I had to go back to the email. I tried the link in the um, message that you sent in Facebook and it said there was another meeting that you were on another meeting. And then when I tried the one that's in the email, it was fine. 
and just message them to use the email link. Frying apples today, that's interesting. <laughs> oh, good. Something is happening. I had gone, had done another, let's <clears throat> make sure. It's interesting. I wonder why they can't get in. It says, it says that there's another meeting in progress. Oh, there's, there's Jacqueline. Jacqueline. Yeah. Hi. Oh, hello, everyone. Good Hi. evening, Jacqueline. You get in. Did you have a hard time doing? Doing? Good. Did you have a hard time getting in? Yeah, but uh, you, when you you sent uh, you said uh, in the group EAC uh, Sunday cooking we can't get in it. Oh, so yeah, did I went and did. The link in the email. Joanna, do you know what the ID is to this meeting? Yeah, I just a sec. I just have it right here. So. Want to type it into the. Uh, Yep. I'll just hang on one sec. I just got it here. Copy. And I can just throw it in the chat here. That's ooh, the link. Sorry. And passcode and ID. Is there any way yeah, for you to share the one that we're on right now? Yeah, day? it's coming. That's it. That's the one that we're on right now. So in the chat there, you can, uh, you want me to just copy and paste it in the group uh, Facebook one again? Yeah, would you do that? Because yeah. then I think that that'll get them to say, hey, you use this one. Yeah. Because everybody's having a bit of a challenge. All I right. know what I did, and I think I know what I did, by the way. Okay, it's in the group. Perfect, I see there. it. I think what happened was, I had done a little test just before, just to see, mm -hmm. and then I shut that meeting off. Mm -hmm. And I think it shared the link to that clearly. The mysteries of the internet, Michelle, that happens to me sometimes. <laughs> and people are like, well, what happened? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> we were on a couple of uh, meetings today or, or this week where, you know, it's like you could, everybody was, it just was a very weird Zoom week. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of people, yeah. How how's your week going, Jacqueline? Oh, I oh. think she's I think she's frozen. But she's got a smile on her face. At least she didn't freeze with usually when it freezes on me, I'm like got my eyes closed and my mouth just half opened or something. Here we go. Hi. Yeah. Hello. Hello. How are Hi. you today? Yeah, I'm really good today. Thank you. Great. My name's Ferry. Ferry, nice to meet you. Yeah, thank you. Oh, David. Hey. Hi. Hi, David. We had yeah. a few difficulties so we're just getting everybody in yes if you use the link just in the email David then you got it right I, I went and yes. one in a Facebook chat and yes what's Catalina saying I don't know <laughs> she said a, a Facebook thing but it's in Spanish Donna oh uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't use Google Translate, Michelle. That's the best I can say. My Spanish is limited. My son says it's not working. Hang on. I'm going to try this. Invite. Email. Been updated, and the shower cell itself is pretty decent. I do want to bring it up to the caliber of everything else so it doesn't feel like an afterthought. Oh, uh -huh. wow. There's a lot of deck out here. I think in the backyard. I was watching little... some interesting TV. That's great. A little home garden stuff. What else are we missing? I love the fact that this place yeah. has a nostalgic. Uh, it's all kind of still here, but it's old, busted, and tired. I would <laughs> love to do a retro theme right And Nick, I don't know what keeps going on with her. Yeah. Here are my thoughts. 
can make this place way more ready. Let's present another link. I use the invite right in the uh, from the meeting. Yeah. Yeah. So I just didn't have Catalina's email. So, you know, making it a dream kitchen. Jacqueline, you're back. First time using Yeah. Zoom. I just emailed. Hey, I'm on the uh, 12th floor. The internet is not very good here. Oh. Hello, Miss Girl. Uh, uh, hi, dear. <laughs> Hi, David. Can you hear us okay? Uh, yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, perfectly yeah. well. Okay. Yeah, exactly. I'm guessing David's watching a TV show. Uh, my wife is, so I gotta, we gotta share, see? <laughs> I'll try to get it to turn. I'll try to tell her to turn it down a bit. You know what we can do afterwards too, and if, if, if it is, is you can just mute your microphone, and then when you want to talk, unmute it. Yeah. And then you'll hear everything, but just remember to unmute it when you want to talk. Sounds good. And wow, am I ever addicted oh, to that? Oh, there it is. <laughs> there we are. Hi, Marcella. Marcella? Hey. Okay. Catalina is giving me your email. <laughs> How are you doing? Oh. Hey, great. Very good. Good, thank you. Donna, uh, do you yes? want to navigate? Do you see Catalina just put her email in? Do you want to navigate adding her in <clears throat> yep. the other way? Can you invite? I think you can. Um, I don't know if I can invite. Uh, for me, it worked only with the password, with the passcode, not yeah. with the not, not with, with the, the link. ID. Okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's probably yeah. good. Maybe she should be able to get that. I Hey, Richard, <laughs> from Ireland. Good morning, everyone. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning from Chile. Hey. <laughs> Good evening from Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow. Oh, so I thought I was the first one away, but I think it's you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's really funny is I was sitting here earlier. Let's give it a try. Everybody smile. <laughs> with this globe out, trying to put my finger on where everybody is on the globe. Mm -hmm. Oops, on the call. And we look a little something like this. <laughs> Here's your chair. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually, the, I think I'm the closest though. I mean, outside I mean, of the Maritimes, I'm probably the closest. Right? You are. Yeah. yeah. This is her. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, well, and then our Vietnamese friends all the way over here. It's like right on the opposite. Isn't that fascinating? <laughs> yeah, correct. <laughs> right? That's where that time zone piece is. Catalina. Hi, Michelle. Hi, beautiful. Hello. Hello. Hi. So I think we've got everybody that's joining us today and anybody else will hopefully they'll figure out the Zoom links. So I'm going to take a second and just uh, introduce sort of me and, and what's going on with our fun here. And then we'll, we'll just go around and let everybody introduce themselves and what country they're from and how you are connected to this call. And um, I'm really excited too, and, and, and David, we'll end with you because we've got a special guest here and, and a little bit of announcement and another special guest here, my yeah. mom. Yeah, hello, hello. Hello, wow. we know her. Hello, Michelle, mom. <laughs> She's part of the team. Right? She's part of the team. <laughs> <laughs> Um, can everybody hear good? Yeah. 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 Excellent. Yeah. First of all, 
everybody looks absolutely amazing today. So loving to see everybody's smiling faces. And it's exciting to have everybody here from like all over the world. But as everybody knows me, because I'm connected to everybody. So I'm Michelle. I'm the extremely proud president and co-owner for Eurocenters Atlantic Canada. And everybody on this call is connected to our team. And this came out of really Donna and I having some great chats with Roz online. Roz is at her book club. Oh, that could be Roz coming in now. Wouldn't that be funny? Talking about her and she comes in. <laughs> um, and it really came out of us enjoying hanging out because, you know, with COVID and everything, we're in New Brunswick and Donna was in Living Room. And we really started to hang out a bit online. And then with Jacqueline in the middle yeah. of my screen, um, we really wanted because she's on her way here very soon. And I'm we, so excited. <laughs> we just wanted to hang out and we all like food. So then we morphed it into a Sunday cooking, um, and uh, <laughs> and here we are. Okay, so cute. Cute. Say hello from Vietnam. Okay, okay. All right, get out. Get out. <laughs> so now we're, we're doing it on a zoom um in the future just so you know we're going to go back to facebook live but we're going to do live and thank you to donna in a, in a in a class a couple of weeks ago and we were having a little fun fighting with squash when we all realized that we should share this experience so we're inviting friends and colleagues from anywhere and, and learners who want to practice. But do you know that this is about hanging out and having fun and cooking together more so than it is anything at all. So, but today we're gonna do, each week I'm gonna feature some little thing I'm cooking. And then each other week we're gonna make sure we, everybody from another country can introduce something. So Marcella is going to be talking to us about a Chilean recipe today. So, I'm I. <laughs> of which she will let us know. But I'm just going to take a minute and let everybody introduce themselves. And I'm going to pop it over to Donna. And I know she's over here for me. I don't know where she is on everybody else's screen. And um, Donna is uh, uh, my teacher, and not just my teacher from our school as a colleague, but she teaches me um, our industry. And I'm really blessed and graced to have that. And if Roz was here, she would say the same. And she has been a gift to have along this journey of learning the ESL world, but not only that, learning it online and uh, connecting more with the world. So, John, I'll, I'll pass it over to you to say a couple words. Mute. Mute. Okay. Back here. Sorry. It's exciting. Yeah. Like, as Michelle had said, this kind of was something we just thought of a, a while ago while we were hanging out and thought, wouldn't it be cool to do some cooking online because we kind of started cooking stuff at home and then posting what are you having for dinner tonight one of those situations so out of that came like wouldn't it be cool if we could start cooking together and inviting all of these international people that we know through the school to join us and just have some fun so it grew to our group of people associated with Eurocenters. And then what was cool is we thought, this is great. Let's invite friends of people who are with Eurocenters also to join us. And the more, the merrier. So uh, I think this is great. And uh, I've been teaching for a really long time uh, English for more, almost 20 years. Um, but I find that the best learning experiences I have for language is uh, is the opportunity, hi Raz, are opportunities to be social and hang out and learn other things. So we're engaged and we get an experience along with uh, some cultural education and just having fun. So this is great. I'm excited to be here this morning. Awesome. Nice to see you, Donna. Thank you. Ciao, Rosen. We missed you last week. Uh, I was in Santiago taking my IELTS. I know, I heard. How was that? Did it go okay? Yeah, the reading always sucks. <laughs> but the rest was... 
Oh, her sister. Okay. Was good. We keep talking, Marcella. Perfect timing. Oh, and that's Richard from Ireland. I can hear you. Marcella, tell us about who you are for the group. Oh, well, mm -hmm. I am. <laughs> I am a teacher. With Catalina, we work in, a, in the same school. Right now, we are working online, of course, because of the, of the pandemia. And, um, well, I will, I will be moving to Canada, hopefully, okay. soon next year. I'm very excited, same as Jackie, yeah. to, to get there. We, we were looking with my family to do to doing this for a long time. And uh, fortunately, I met Michelle through my uh, daughter. And so I hope we can make it. Right now, the situation in Chile is very, very, very complicated. Not only because of uh, the social demands, people not happy with the government we have, uh, but also with the pandemic. We just yesterday, Catalina can tell you a little bit more maybe, we just um, enter into a complete lockdown. We cannot go out at all. There are police, military, soldiers in the streets. We cannot do anything. I couldn't get meat yesterday. And we have special wow. permissions that we can get online uh, we can download these permissions through a website that is uh, from the police, but it's limited. We have only twice a week to go out to buy groceries, only twice a week for three hours. Now I am getting a special per permission to see my parents. I need to go and visit my parents and see if they need medicine. My dad has a problem in his leg, so I need to go and see how he's doing. People over 75 are not allowed at all to be in the street, at all. They cannot go out. So the situation is very strict wow. now. And uh, it's uh, so, uh, so hard because we are used to going out to the countryside. We have mountains everywhere here. We are surrounded by mountains, lakes, glaciers. So for us, this is terrible. Catalina can tell, Catal if, if Catalina shows the, her, her patio, her yard, you will see the mountains she is surrounded by. It's a, so being locked for us is new, completely new. We have never been locked before. Wow. One yeah. of the things we, and thank you for sharing that, Marcella, because it is one of the things that we also enjoy in getting together once a week to truly share what's happening in our spaces. When yep. Rosalind and I were visiting David yesterday, who's uh, bringing the gift of maple to everybody on this call and around the world, um, we were talking a little bit about what the change, because you had just shared um, uh, what was going on. And it's, you know, we don't always hear that. And, and the fortunate thing in our place is we have the opposite, right? It is extremely safe here. Uh, we're back to school one week, there's no new cases and the Atlantic bubble. Uh, Jackie, Jacqueline, I'm sure you're so excited, continues to remain extremely safe. Mm -hmm. So for that, you know, when we, when everybody on this call arrives and, and it may be Catalina will let you introduce yourself and then Richard, because Richard is the next one that's destined to be here as well. Um, and he'll give you his quick background, but maybe Catalina, um, introduce yourself a little bit and give us your high level. Okay, I'm Catalina and I am also a teacher of English here in um, Puerto Natales in Chile. Well, as mm. Marcela said, uh, it has been very complicated here by now. Mm. We are, it's different and sometimes when you are not getting used to these things, it's complicated to start over again. So um, this week everything started again for us. We are thinking about what we are going to do during these four days and probably this is going to continue for more because our president asked for 90 days of this kind of lockdown and quarantine so it's three months more and we have been through this for I don't know six seven months by now so it's quite complicated and actually this place is very peaceful. Our our city is very peaceful, but now we cannot get out of our homes. So it's quite complicated. And even though the, the landscape, it's quite amazing. At least we have this 
uh, to waking up every, every morning that uh, there is fresh air, uh, but it's not the reality of all the cities in our countries. We are quite blessed here in this city. I'm going to show you the view of my window. Please Look, do. If you Did can see the view. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> awesome. Oh, shit. <laughs> Catalina lives out in the, in the, like, out of the city. I am in the middle of the city, but it's still a, a tiny place. It's only 20,000 people, so it's very quiet. If I can get the glitter well enough, so we need to realize, all right, so they're way at the bottom. Yeah, down there. Yeah. And I had such a privilege in uh, spending a week with these beautiful ladies and enjoying lots of uh, laughter and love and food and beverage. So I'll be excited to hear what you're sharing to eat here in a minute. But uh, um, Richard, you're in the middle, so I'm going to move over to you and then Jacqueline around the corner here in a second. Richard from Ireland. Smoothie. Okay, just uh, one question. How do I how do I make myself the big picture? <laughs> <laughs> You're always the big picture. <laughs> that sounds bad. That sounds bad. What about me? <laughs> no, but I notice sometimes when you talk, I see one person. How do you how do I do that? Donna. Uh, you can see only one person, so probably you have to link. Let me see. So what I mean is for you guys to see me, like, is yeah. it when I speak, do I become the... No, no. See, no. I, I see all of you. Yes, I can see all of you. Put your screen, there's different views. We usually leave the screen where we can see everybody. Yes. Um, I, I can see, like, what I mean, what I mean is I see everybody at the top, and then I see one person speaking. And you have a different kind of uh, um, screen. Uh, screen uh, it's from the region. Yeah. Well, anyway, as long as you guys can see me like well enough, I, we that's can see the only person the talking person at this point because I'm on my phone. Everybody Ross, else, can we can hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> We can hear you, Roz. There we go. Donna, <laughs> oh, we need another yeah. tech support for Richard. Is there a view, a quick way that you can show him the view he needs to be on so he can see all of us at once? Oh, no, 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 Michelle, I can see all of you at once. It's just that when you talk, I'll see you, and then somebody else talks, I'll see them in the big picture. And I'm just mm -hmm. hoping that you guys can see me when I speak in the big picture. We can see you yeah. perfectly. Give us your story okay, so we okay. can get cut. All right, well, here I am. I'm Richard. I'm, I'm in Ireland. Okay. All right. So I'll do a quick introduction. I'm Richard. I'm in Ireland. I'm, an, I'm a former Canadian. I'm about to be a, I guess, an expat back home. <laughs> a a re-Canadian. <laughs> uh, my mother is uh, here too in Ireland. She's flying back on Thursday. And um, COVID had a lot to do with the decision to, to move back, you know. And um, it's been difficult for everybody. It's not as anything like in Chile, though. That's that's quite something. I've um, I was actually in Spain the first week of March. Or sorry, the week of March when um, you know the lockdowns began there, just after Trump closed the borders, and then and then a few days later, Spain closed their started shutting everything down, and it was unlike anything I'd ever seen. And it was it was really organized. I couldn't I couldn't believe how fast it happened because they just one day they closed the beaches and then the next day the promenades and then the next day after that you couldn't go out shopping unless uh, you know it was just one person at a time and oh. stopping the cars and asking questions and all kinds of things like that and then it was just about getting out of Spain and uh, Ireland doesn't have the infrastructure to do that you know the, the sort of the police and infrastructure to do that so you know <laughs> it's a bit better I'll give you a view of the of Ireland though Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? Can you see it? Yeah. 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 It's beautiful. There's, there's the cows on the field. <laughs> see, now that looks a little bit more like Atlantic Canada. It's similar. It's similar. Yeah, we do not nearly have the mountains that you, you beautiful ladies down have in your neck of the woods. 
So Richard, in the spirit of time, we're gonna, I'm just gonna get everybody to give a quick highlight so we can get cooking. Um, and as much as we want to hear really details in the countries, but you know what guys, I think we wanna have a chat about some fun stuff. Because you know what, there is a lot of not so good stuff going on. And you know what the nice thing about on Sundays is getting together to share food, at least fortunately, I know Marcella had some limited uh, uh, options for cooking, as she said, or shopping, I should say. Yeah, but so we prepared something, something too. Over, where are we? Jacqueline, you're, well, I don't know where you are on everybody's screen, but you're right over here. So do you want to give an introduction to yourself? And I think you've got a, a friend with you today too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Jacqueline Huynh. Uh, I'm from Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam. And uh, my, fam my family is going to move to Lunenburg um, maybe uh, next week. Okay. Oh, sorry. No, 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 next week, but next month. Uh, I'm very excited. Okay. Um, I used to be a teacher, but now my, uh, my role is the recruiter from Vietnam. Uh, I'm very happy to work with uh, Michelle and Rosaline, uh, Donna, okay, and I hope uh, in the future I'll work with um, uh, Masala, okay? <laughs> you are very nice, Masala, okay? And uh, today um, I have two friends. One is um, uh, Ferry, Ferry, where are you? Uh, Thuy Tien, where are you? Are you here? Thuy Tien? Yeah, Thuy Tien. And another one is uh, Thảo Phương. Um, Thảo Phương is a lecturer from my um, old university. Thảo Phương, you say hi, can you? Uh, she's not very well. Yeah, nice to meet you all. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm Tom <laughs> Hello. And, yeah. And uh, Thuy Tien, okay, uh, she's uh, my old student, and uh, she's a teacher too. And uh, say hi. 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 Literally, the ocean. <laughs> it's the ocean. It's the uh, here. Let me give you and and I all my friends just went down to the beach, so I'm gonna leave soon. So I'm just gonna <laughs> hi everybody. I'm Rosalind. I just see the little tiny screen, so I apologize. But uh, this is the um, view. Oh, wow. beautiful! Yeah. Wow, that's the Atlantic Ocean, uh -huh. and we're in uh, Fundy area, oh. and. Uh, there's uh, this that gazebo actually was up here, but it slid down, and then that's the next level. But it's uh, it's beautiful. The weather is fantastic. It's a sunny day, so we're we're just yeah. finished breakfast, and we're going for a walk on the beach. So yeah, um, nice. <laughs> thank you very much for having a call, and enjoy your cooking. And I uh, well. shall see you all soon. Yes, yeah, enjoy you. your vacation so weekend. Yeah, enjoy, yeah. enjoy vacation. Yeah, Michelle? Before you run, I'm yep. going to uh, just introduce, I'm going to give David an introduction and let him say hello. So David had the opportunity to be down in Lunenburg recently and um, get to meet with Paula and Jackie, mm -hmm. so her not on the call today. Yeah. So it's kind of probably fun for David to get to meet a few of our other teachers. And then, and Richard will be joining us the first of the year when he gets into Canada and we'll be working with the team um with teaching as well as really working with uh, our homestay programs and our summer programs so we're excited to be having him join so really david you're getting to meet a lot of our team and and seeing the diversity that we have but he has the same passion um for food and everything but he is a fifth generation in the maple syrup business wow yeah so, <laughs> great um, one of the things we had discovered, and I've been talking to David, and this is something that's going to be happening, is these wonderful little maple candies, they come in a little uh -huh. package. Now, every student that signs up will get their luggage tag, their boarding pass, their letter of acceptance, let's be realistic, <laughs> the most important document. 
But mm -hmm. second to that, Donna, <clears throat> a taste of Atlantic Canada will arrive mailed to their home. Nice. With a nice. card that's attached to it that's going to allow them to become a Maple Ambassador and what I'm calling the Maple Alumni. David, I hope you like it. Awesome. So uh, they are now going to become Eurocenters Atlantic Canada Maple Alumni, which means they're going to get a little card David and I are going to work with together. And if they want to purchase products online, they can be shipped to their place anywhere in the world. And then when they come here to Atlantic Canada, they'll have their alumni cards, which will allow them to get special promotions where they can find Briggs Maple products. The best part of it is, is he works with suppliers all over Atlantic Canada and the world to promote what maple is. And he's gonna be working with Paula and Donna to create a maple curriculum. Hmm. So we're now gonna be having every student that studies with Euro Centers will learn about maple as part of our curriculum. And Donna, I know you love this, and that's just when Paula, and I won't get her accent right, was sitting awesome. here and she said, oh, it's dripping and it tastes good, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna lie. Um, and she said, and John, I think you'll love this. Paula said, what better to teach someone because they have to tap the tree and then the syrup has to drip out or uh, rain out hmm. and then we have to stir it. Then it's turned, it's boiled. So the actual process involves a lot of different actions and different pieces of it. So the teachers um, are gonna work with David and he will be able to come into a lesson and yeah. he's gonna do a demonstration. So any okay. of our students are now gonna get to experience that. And we're gonna continue to look for ways that we can send a taste of Atlantic Canada away, but then when they come back in, they will know that they're gonna have other experiences. So I really want to welcome David to say yep. uh, just a couple of words. And this is, you know, not something that he has done and partnered <laughs> with an educational institution. So we're in this particular group. So you, we're going to talk about Chile and I'm going to tell you right now, Marcella, her daughter could have taken out chairs in Briggs Maple when she went to Riverview High. Mm -hmm. She lived with Michelle Burke up the street and it was a constant down and we brought a lot of maple when we went down and visited so we already know that we've got some addicted people down in Chile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, buy, I buy the cheap stuff here in Ireland. It's, uh, <laughs> it's generic. <laughs> it just says, it's, uh, it says grade A anyway. It's, it works but... <laughs> As, as long as long as it's pure, Richard, that's all that matters. Well, it says it says 100% pure Canadian maple syrup, grade A. I bought it at Lidl, if you know that uh, supermarket chain, and that's all it says. Widely recycled. <laughs> well, I want to thank Michelle for this opportunity. Um, again, uh, our family's been making maple syrup products for generations probably since the 1800s um, so we we're quite well known for it in the Moncton area. Um, Michelle introduced me and gave me quite a tour of the school here a few weeks ago and we're quite impressed and we're happy to work with the school in any way we can and educating and giving the world a taste of maple and telling them how it's done. Um, Richard, you'll appreciate this maybe a bit that our maple syrup is made in an area called New Ireland. Um, the settlers years ago immigrated from Ireland and settled in the area and farmed the area. And today my father taps 12,000 trees, maple wow. trees in the area that was formerly settled by Irish settlers. So there's a little thing? history for you, Richard. I uh, hope you can... Uh, uh appreciate that a little better but uh, your okay, serve okay. comes from new ireland when you purchase it mm -hmm. from us so there's a tidbit for you so but uh, thank you again michelle i'll keep it short and uh any questions you may have along the way let me know i may not be able to stay for the whole thing but uh i've got a few things to do today but uh certainly i i'm i'm easy in my chair here restful and watching the 
the the tastes go on. So let's let's carry on from there. Thanks, Michelle. Thank you, David. We're so excited about that. And too, and you can picture this, guys. When Roz and I were with David and Roz, I know you got to run, but this will be your last. And we were sitting with him yesterday, and we spent a couple hours at the store, and we said. One of the other experiences, Donna, is in every homestay family is now going to get a bottle of Briggs maple syrup. It won't be this one. It'll be the regular one. And that way, the first breakfast that any one of our students has, they're going to have the opportunity to put maple syrup on it. And that family can enjoy that. What do you think? Oh, I think that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So on that note, Marcella, we'll turn it over to you because we know she just can't wait to get here and have more maple syrup as well. <laughs> well, we, we, we have it almost every day. I use it for cakes, for pancakes, for just any recipe that, that we invent here at home. Yeah, we love it. Good stuff. So what you cooking for us today? Well, we have, we have the recipe for uh, empanadas with Catalina. We have it in a presentation though, because I couldn't get to the supermarket because if I, if I went to the supermarket, I would lose one whole permission for my week. No. So it was only for meat that I needed. I have all in the house except that type of meat. So I decided not to go to the supermarket, but we have it in a presentation, but uh, maybe I will send it and you can use it in the, uh, with the students, because it's mm. a bit long. But maybe, Catalina, we can show them how to make the pisco sour? Oh, yes, it could be. <laughs> because that is very short to show. And I have all the ingredients. I'm not, I'm not going to make it, otherwise I will get drunk here. <laughs> but very, very I can show you the ingredients. I am sure if you have big supermarket chains there, you will find pisco for sure. Yeah. I will, can you show the presentation, Kata? Where the, can you share it? Okay, uh, can you continue talking and I will download it for this yes. format? I okay. Will, I will get the, the ingredients. Uh, okay, see. perfect. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, while they're getting ready, I'm going to head out and go for a walk on the beach with the girls. Enjoy, I can't, I'm so glad it's being recorded so I can actually watch it all and sorry, I'm gonna miss the rest, but I will see you all and I love you and thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. So this drink, this Pisco Sour is Sergio's uh, favorite drink that is uh, for, for uh, Marcella's husband. Well, and Pisco Sour, it's a, of course, a drink. It's a typical, well, it's a fight between yes. Peruvians oh. and Chilean. Um, Michelle, <laughs> is it possible that you can't leave the option to share available? Yeah. Because I cannot show you the presentation. Yeah. Okay, thanks. So we are in that argument still with Peruvians. Who invented Pisco Sour? Honestly, I think it's Peruvian. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I'm very honest. I think it's Peruvian. When I went to Santiago last week, we went to our, a Peruvian restaurant because they are already open in open areas, not inside, open areas, outside, balconies, etc. But their pisco sour is the best, I, I must say. Yeah, see, that's the empanadas, and we put we put a little uh, video of the empanadas, but it's too long to watch now. I think, but okay, there's you can just flip through a few slides for us and then we can share it afterwards. I love working with teachers. Yeah. Well, actually this uh, dish is not so difficult to prepare, but um, I have one. It's oh. from yesterday. I bought some <laughs> empanadas and I'm going to show you because uh, the stuffing, it could be anything. I mean, something sweet, like something um, salty. And, uh, but the typical ones are the ones that Marcela is going to tell you. Yeah, the typical empanada is filled with, uh, uh, stuffed with uh, meat, with meat. Hi, I'm Victoria Blamey. I am from Santiago, Chile. I'm the executive chef at Coffin Bar and Grill, and I'm here to do oven baked Chilean empanada. First, we're gonna do the filling, which is called pino. Pino is basically a mix of meat, diced onions, paprika, cumin, 
salt. You don't want it to be more onion than meat. It ruins the flavor. Because who likes to eat an empanada of just onion? I used to be a vegetarian for seven years. I became vegetarian when I was 15 years old. You cannot make vegetarian empanada. I will say no way. People have done the mozzarella thing. No. We do make them. I've seen them. I would never eat them. I did like being vegetarian. I liked it more even when I was living in England. The vegetarian population there was huge. And obviously in Chile, you're like, you have no idea. If you ever go to Chile or Argentina, it's, it's like I think you kill a cow every 30 seconds. The National Day or Independence Day and you're celebrating and you do asado, it's literally just beef. So the important part about cooking the onion is that you need to sweat it down all the way. It is better if you do this filling the day before. It does taste better. All the flavors are gonna be um, integrated better. While we're cooking the onion, we're going to cut the beef. The kind of cut that you guys want is usually between flank steak or eye round. Or if you guys wanna buy ground beef, it's not a big deal. Just make sure that whenever you buy ground, it depends on the dial that they ground the meat so it's not tasty like basically baby food. And you want uh, small dice. But now that this is like halfway there, I would add on paprika, like a teaspoon, cumin. A tip, which might sound like a little weird, it is from the recipe, but actually, you know, people do use it a lot, is that we use uh, bouillon cubes to flavor sofrito. It is like a very home-cooked technique. Usually people try to dissolve it in water or something. You can do that, or you can just crumble this into your filling. So at the end of the day, you're gonna put some wine in this too and cook it out. Now, that means that you need to be careful with the salt. I'm gonna add on wine, like half a cup, I would say, because wine makes everything better. Even better when you drink it though. <laughs> now it's getting nice and soft. We're gonna add on the meat. Touch of salt, a little bit more of the wine. I'm gonna add on a touch of chili powder, which is like a spice element. We're gonna let this cook for like between an hour, hour and a half, maybe a little bit more. Try it every 15 minutes, stir it, try the flavor, see how it's developing. Cover this. Our filling now is made, right? Resting, cooling down. We're about to make the dough. I'm just gonna be brave and do it by hand. And we're gonna melt our butter first. Put the baking powder in. Sift your flour if you can. Catalina? Should can you move powder? it a little bit? Um, because it's mixing. a little bit long, so we can see the end oh. of the... Right, the eggs in Let me time. see. Yes. Okay. Do is you put the filling in. Two mm -hmm. more is more to the bottom mm -hmm. than the top. Okay. Okay. Just because of ready. the fold that you need to make. Everything has to be cold. Yeah. I don't want this filling to be sitting out. I'm gonna just cut the egg. And then maybe we can see your empanada before yeah. you eat it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you don't like raisins, sure, don't put them in. But if you wanna have the full Chilean experience, put the raisins in. I just Catalina put, I is very thin, but so she's the best them. eater ever. <laughs> now yes. this is the trick part. So you press here. And don't be shy of pressing. And then you fold right here and then right there. It's like a moment of glory. So we're gonna try it. <laughs> so again, press down, press with your thumb, okay? All the way here. Then why do you leave that space? So you can make that fold later to the top and the bottom. Press with your finger also on the top of the bottom and the same here. So square that off. I was and watching an episode of Bobby Flay on the no food pressure. network and he was struggling to make an empanada the other day and get it shaped right. It was funny. And like two tablespoons of milk. The and that was the only thing he couldn't get it shaped right. right. Yeah, and the, stuff, the stuffing, the filling, the filling. must be the filling. Uh, thick. So it just so in about 30 to 35 minutes um, that we put our babies in the oven. We're gonna go and check them out. Look at now. Let me see yeah. if we can put it here. Looks good. Yeah. Wow. Yes, they are good. <laughs> yes, and I have, uh, I'm going to. I can't see you out ah, there. Here you go. Yes, I have mine here. Can you see? Wow. Uh, Actually, wow. Actually, it's my songs because it's this the filling is quite different. I'm going to show you. This is an empanada of just, well, it's cool by now, but it's just cheese. 
because oh. it doesn't like meat very much, actually. It, even though we are a very, um, very well known for being meat eaters in this part of the, the continent, we are very good for meat. But my son is not for that. <laughs> yeah, he, he prefers to eat vegetables or cheese, actually. So, yeah. but those are quite good. Yesterday, I ate some of them with cream, corn, and celery, and it, it was quite good. So you can create your own yeah. uh, filling. For example, the typical, uh, we have the Napolitan one, which is um, cheese, ham, tomato, and some herbs. And it looks like a pizza, but it's inside because it's like a pastry, actually. Right. You mm -hmm. have pastries everywhere, but this is kind of different because of the filling, just because of that. Yeah. But it's traditional here, quite yeah. traditional. And the, the last, the last uh, picture where the pisco sour ah. is. Yes, okay, I'm going to show you the pisco sour, which is the most important part of the presentation. No, it's not true, <laughs> <laughs> but it is something like that. Okay, here you have pisco sour. It's something quite simple. Yes, you need just lemon uh, syrup and the pisco, which is the liquor that we have, but actually, as Marcela said, you can probably find it in a supermarket in a quite big chain. So, and you need this, which is amargo angostura. It's something like a bitter. It's um, a very small bottle and it's super bitter and it's just some drops you oh, have to okay. put in because of the flavor. So okay. if you need the recipe, we can share or we can uh, meet together during evening. <laughs> <laughs> I like that idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great idea. <laughs> We're <all> meeting. <laughs> and this is the syrup. Yes. Ah, I'm sure. Yes. I'm going to leave um, this. Okay, Marce. Yeah. So you, you just the syrup? that's important not to make a mistake because when I prepare it, I talk too much and then I forget how much I am adding and I end up adding too much pisco. Yeah. So it's one right. part of syrup, one part of lemon, and three parts of pisco. Ooh. And then you just mix it and drink it with a few drops of okay. angostura, which is, this is from Spain, actually. And Trinidad and Tobago, too. Yes. yes. This is from Spain. It's not, it's not cheap. It's a little bit expensive, but you can, I have this for like two years already. I don't think we can buy it here. Oh, we can, we can, we can. Yeah, I used to be a bartender in Toronto. It's an ingredient in a few drinks. Okay, Bitters. maybe in Toronto, but yeah. I'm not sure about Atlanta, Canada. We're going to have to check on that one. Just it look was, for it was in the Bitters. Dodgier pubs. In the Dodgier pubs, you find yeah. it. Yeah. When I go to Canada, I will be taking as much Pisco as I can in all <laughs> our bags. But it's only, we are allowed to take two bottles. That's right. So Travel abroad, we always take pisco because we love pisco sour. It's just my life without pisco sour is not possible. So <laughs> oh, yeah. find in the supermarkets, look if you can see where to, to buy it because after a few months, I will run out of pisco. And that Whoa. Okay. There's a link. There's a link here that gives you places you can buy online. There's a website called <laughs> Cocktail Monkey, so you can order it from Amazon or wherever. So... You're in luck. Everybody's Donna, good. you're the bomb, man. Donna's like, I'm on it, Marcella. I'm on your person. I'm like, what do you, you mean you can't get it? No, you know, no, no, this is not good. We must get it. <laughs> now, it is important that you get a Pisco Sour. Well, this is a good brand, Alto del Carmen. Okay, this is a good brand. It's 35 degrees. Okay, if it's more than that, it will be too strong then. You yeah. will be all drunk. It's, it's strong. It's like, it's like uh, tequila or, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit strong. So, so yeah. I want to interject some fun maple into this equation. David, you knew it was coming. So when you make the simple syrup, instead of using sugar, this is maple sugar. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So you could substitute the white granulated sugar for, for this. One. Yeah, we will have That's to try it. Yeah, One of, we I, I did the, a pickled vegetable using this instead of sugar the other day. Yeah? Yeah, might be, David, like one of the best ever. Donna, I have one coming your way, by the way. 
this week. Um, wow. To, but that's a nice way because um, where it's natural versus granulated sugar. So it's our oh, best. Like a maple pesto sour. <laughs> yeah. Nice. That is going to be the Canadian touch of our <laughs> fusion. Fusion cocktails. I love it. Yeah. I love it. So listen, um, if do you have anything to add on the pisco sours as it other than that? <clears throat> Just drink it. So Does everybody know the term you can get a little pissed? <laughs> So there's an, it is an I just idiom, looked it up right, in Heather? Ireland, I can find it, I can find it here. I just looked it up. And, and, and I, I just looked it up in Ireland so I can find it. I'm going to try it out. Oh, look at this. Richard, so, I'm in. so we're going to commit to always sharing the recipes with everybody and making sure that that gets shared out. We're actually going to make sure we post them on our Facebook page anyways. So afterwards, we'll work to make sure that we post any of the stuff out that we have and we do. I but have to take things, off, I'm sorry. Pop, I'm going to give you guys my quick apple piece here because I know we're going to run. So I already prepped everything in advance. Oh, mom's from the frying pans on. You're going to need to see it. So I cut all the apples up in advance and I squeeze the lemon out on top so that they're not going to oxidize. But I wish I could, well, I'm going to actually get it. So I've got this little cool apple peeler thing here. I'm going to put the camera down so that you can see this at work. Oh, look, product placement everywhere. By the way, <laughs> this is the Albert County bourbon barrel aged. You don't cook with this one. You just use it like a topper. Cook with the regular stuff. So can you guys see this? Mm -hmm. So the apple ah. goes on to the end. Watch this. Oh, I love that one. <laughs> and it's going to cut it. Peel it and core it. Wow. So all I need to do is wow. cut it in half and I've got full apple slices. Wow. Sweet. Oh, I didn't know that How's I need that some for fun? <laughs> Must need tool. So while this is down here, guys, I'm going to fry those up in a frying pan and some coconut oil. Really high heat coconut oil is high cooking. And then what I just do is toppings like a topping bar. So this walnuts, this is hemp. I'm a coconut complete fan. So there's always coconut in my world. Almonds. And what I do is because for me, I can't eat dairy. So, and I really missed ice cream and ice cream bars. So I tore to turn these fried apples into the point where you fry a bunch of it up. And I use three different types of apples. So I use a really hard Granny Smith, and then I use softer Macintosh, and a softer, I think it's a gal is the other one. So some will stay hard, and some will go mushy. And then I just put all the toppings on it. And because I can't have dairy, if you take a can of whole coconut milk, it turns into whipped cream really quickly if you take the juice off it and just whip it. And then the only thing I added to sweeten it Full syrup. And on this one, I did use the barrel age to amp up that. And you just use like a teaspoon of it and that's like unbelievably delicious. So I, I that would know. totally kill the ice cream fix. You, you wouldn't oh. need the ice cream after that. I <laughs> you can put ice cream on it. See, the thing is, my thing was, is I wanted the opportunity to, because I had, had to stop eating dairy and I had to stop eating sugar. And I'm like, what am I going to do? So I really took that <laughs> fried apples in a frying pan because I could have natural sugars in, in the piece. And because I couldn't have sugar, sugar, I just take it and I'm going to fry them in high heat. And when the apples are brown and caramelized, I will add maple syrup. I'm not going to use that one. I use the regular maple syrup to cook with. And um, mom's got the pans ready over here. And I don't know if you can hear it. Yep. But the sizzling hot. And they'll take about <coughs> five minutes, which we won't stay on. I, I should have started them earlier. But the other thing, can everybody smell? <laughs> <laughs> I wish um, it's mint. 
Oh, lovely, lovely. So, and I picked it in my backyard this morning. And the thing about mint is, is you can use that and I'll just cut it up really fine and then put that on top of the apples as well. And it, what it does is because once you cook the apples, you bring up the natural sugar yeah. and I added maple syrup. So it's a, it can be sugary. The mint kind of just freshens it up a little bit. Topped with, like I said, and I use the whipped coconut. Um, you can use whatever type of whipped cream or ice cream if you would like as well, obviously. The other thing that it's great for this apple mixture is I'll make it and I leave it in the fridge. Mm -hmm. And then I'll be making pork chops or pork loin. I will take that out and use it as a topper on top of uh, roasted pork loin. So the thing about the apples cooked, it's a beautiful sweet recipe, but you can take the exact same thing and use it as a savory topping. But instead of mint, I would just put like um, some summer savory or I'd put some fresh thyme on it. And all you have to do is warm the apples back up and put it over top of your pork. So it's sort of one of those all around recipes I like because- It's a fantastic recipe. I, I really love it because I'm, I'm a bit like you, like, you know, I'm lactose intolerant. I'd never drink a glass of milk, but I, I do make the exception for ice cream. I just put up with the pain, you know? <laughs> So, what do you guys think of that? Has anybody ever fried apples up in a frying pan like that before? No, no, no. No, I'm good. Okay, I got my sous chef behind me going crazy. I'm going to show you this apple. It's hot. See the caramelization on it? Wow, nice. That's what you want. And there's nothing in that pan other than coconut oil okay. with those apples. So they'll get fried up like that. Mm. And it's mm. one of those things that you can make for your friends and you do it all up in a pan and they think, wow. And it feels like, like, that's like that's zero fat. Fancy. You can eat this all day. <laughs> it really doesn't take long. And if you have the fancy dancy apple peeler, which by the way, does look like something that's prehistoric and would have a whole lot of other uses, I know. And Paderno does them and they're only here, well, like, tw like 25 bucks Canadian. And this one's about six years old. So that's wait great. now, and I'll have anybody ask any questions. The other thing I will top it off with is some fresh squeezed orange. So when it's all finished, I just squeeze some, oil, just some lemon juice on top of it. And again, it just gives it a nice, nice brightness. But right now it's apple season here in Atlantic Canada. See, David with the big it's smile apple season on his face. here in Chile, so we can, we can do that. We, we produce, <laughs> we grow apples. It's, it's the fruit we have the whole year. That's exactly right. So it's a wonderful recipe to use it in multiple ways. Um, Jacqueline, how much apples do you eat in Vietnam? Uh, in Vietnam, we uh, we don't have uh, apples like uh, yours, uh, but uh, my family eats apples every day. Okay, uh, in the morning, uh, we use apples to make smoothie. We nice. um, yeah, we mix uh, apples, bananas, uh, lettuce, um, uh, spinach, uh, pumpkin, something like that uh, to make the smoothie. Apples add a nice crispness to it. Yeah. yeah. They really are good that way. So there's a new trick for you too, because if you fry the apples, it just yeah. gives them, like you said, it brings up the natural sugars in it and it's sweet. Yeah. I do recommend, and that's why I was showing the different types of apples, because yeah. there's anybody here. Um, the other thing is it's a similar filling that you could use in a tart. So yeah. I often make a tart where I crush nuts and yeah. then I just do all the crushed nuts and then I bake it. And then you mm. can put the, this apple filling in it and make it into like little tarts. Also mm. fantastic. But see, yeah. your softer apples go really mushy, more like applesauce. Mm. And then these harder apples will stay more consistent. So when you cook the two together, it gives a nice different consistency. Yeah. So uh, I, I always have a package of it cooked in the fridge all week because it's also mm -hmm. really good comfort food. When you come mm. home, you can put a bowl full of apples, warm it up. Put some extra maple syrup on it. 
and have it. <laughs> Look at that. I can nice imagine this work, smell. Helen. Can nice smell? work, Helen. Smell them good. <laughs> yeah. We get to get that one figured out. Yeah, I can spin this one. So that would be well one of my absolutely favorite recipes that I like to share with people. And when I taught the cooking class, which Martina, Marcella's daughter, came to when she was here in Canada. And I know that, that was actually one of the recipes that in that whipped uh, coconut that she had tried while she was there. But uh, she's a pretty adventurous eater too. But I know she likes her healthy food. And Yeah, yeah. We have that recipe book here. She got a little like a booklet with recipes. Yeah, <laughs> we have it here. So I will make sure everybody gets that recipe sent to them. Oh, that is one of my favorite recipe books. I love it. It's a very good wow. book. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Great. Jacqueline, we'll make sure we have that waiting for you when you arrive here in Canada at your new place. Yeah. yeah. It's a yum and yummer cookbook. It's, it's so good. Yummer. Yeah. And you know what, David, they use maple syrup throughout that entire book. Yeah, we just need to get yeah. them to put the word Briggs above it. <laughs> but uh, I, uh, I, I just, yeah, I Go just ahead. know Vietnamese books. I don't know anything about Western dishes, okay? So um, uh, I hope uh, some, uh, one day you will teach me how to uh, make uh, apple pie. Did <laughs> <laughs> you have to make apple pie? Yeah. Okay, Helen. Okay. Well, Can't wait to, to learn from you. I've a lot of apple pies in my life. You know what? Yeah. We will make apple pie in the next couple of weeks for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh. um, my whole family, you know, when you go to your family's home, this will be my last statement. We'll see if anybody wants to share anything. Apple pie is one of those things that when my family's coming to visit, they would say, well, mom would say, well, what do you want me to make? And everybody goes, Helen, make your apple pie. Nanny, make, <laughs> apple, Nanny, make apple pie. So she's very well known great. for her apple pie. Mm, great. We'll turn that one over to you. What is your favorite thing, Marcella? Oh, now of course I asked her. Catalina, what's your favorite thing with apples? Um, actually, I like apple pie. Here we have something similar, but it's uh, because of the um, German influence. We have Kuchen or Q-hen as the word is. It's something similar like a cake and mm -hmm. it's different kind of uh, um, fruits and uh, special creams. So mm. usually we have that, but as Marcela said, I eat almost everything. <laughs> I, I am like, I love apples in any kind of ways. So mm. it's not a problem for me, but I would mm. like and, and I would love to know more about Vietnamese recipes or something like that, which is something quite new for me. Yes, I okay. Be, yeah. Yeah, I hope you, um, I, I don't share the recipe with you. So next week, Jacqueline, I think you're going to need to give us, uh, you're going to have to pick one to share. She did a few weeks ago, she had made a recipe with us and she had everything prepped like this. So oh, we'll, no. we'll, 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 we'll get You know, her my, on. yeah, my favorite uh, dish is uh, chicken uh, rice noodle soup. Mm, noodles. It, yeah. Yeah, rice noodle soup. Okay. That's good. Yeah. We like that. You can make that. We'll follow. Yes. See, here's the thing too. If we do the ingredients in advance, if you want to, you can be in your kitchen and try to make it along yeah, with it too. That would be so nice. We can, we can do it all together. Yes. Yep. So Jacqueline, you'll have to message us the eat in advance. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Richard? That's a very good idea. That's almost as good as the the maple, you know, candies. That's amazing. I like it. So yeah. here's as far as my, my my favorite apple dish is is um is what you guys you and Helen just made. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll make it for you when you get here. Okay. <laughs> What's your favorite apple dish? Oh, it's exactly what I just said. It's exactly oh. <laughs> no, D David Briggs. What's your favorite oh, apple sorry. dish? Uh, apple pie. Apple apple crisp is another one. And yeah. you can use maple maple syrup in that too. So. Yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> That's Michelle's birthday cake every year. Apple crisp. <laughs> apple crisp. <laughs> apple crisp. <laughs> That's my favorite. 
And it was easy to turn apple crisp into gluten free. So that was the other thing that worked really well. David, in Chile, in Chile we don't use as much uh, maple syrup. I mean, no. people who travel or whose children have lived abroad, we know it. But we, in general, Chilean people don't know it that much. Right. Maybe no. we can put a link. We have lots of friends with Catalina. Maybe yeah. we can put a link or something so they can know the product. And, and yeah. for sure, somebody will say, oh, I know that. It's good. And they will start watching. And, and there are lots of new business right now with organic products, you know, like more healthy style. So maybe they can contact you and you can spread yeah. the business. Oh, for, sure. <laughs> for sure, most definitely. BriggsMaples.com. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know what? And Marcella, we'll connect you directly with David because remember, she just, and I think it said to you that she owned a, a hostel down there and they had just sold it. So she's worked in the tourism industry too. So she's well connected. So we'll, we'll, we'll get the Briggs connection down there. Fairy, do you have any favorite apple dishes? And, and in Kachner, she's adjusting. Fairy? I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, sorry. So okay. um, this, this is the first time I joined this group and, um, and I have never tried Western food. So I have no, I have not, no idea, I have no idea about apple <laughs> to make food. Yeah, this, it's really uh, strange for for me. <laughs> yeah, so I hope to see more recipe in your country. Yes. Thank you. you will, and thank you for joining yes. us. <laughs> yes. Very much so. Well, listen, everybody. Um, next week, you will get links and organized differently in advance. Um, thank you for participating this way. But um, I'm going to check with Lynn and we will probably do it on a Facebook Live, which means anybody at any time can come in for five minutes or go back out. It'll be far less controlled that way. Um, we would have to have a little bit more of knowing in advance who's interacting. So it's a little bit different on a Facebook Live. But um, it, the one thing with Zoom, it does allow us to be able you know, to need a little bit more control back and forth. But we're here to have fun. That's really what it's about. And um, I just like to say thanks for cooking with us this morning. And we're looking forward to sharing those exact recipes. And Jacqueline's going to be on deck to yeah. show us her favorite soup next week. Yeah. And, and then I'll come up. I think what I'll do is just a, a pork and maple and apple recipe for next week. That is a really a good hearty Atlantic Canadian dish. It, and uh, that way we could each show something um, and I'll have it prepped as well. Fantastic. This was really, really fun. Fantastic. It really was. Yeah. I really enjoyed this. Well, uh, thank you so much, Richard. And the other note that we did determine yesterday when we were at David, we said, so the welcome package is going to get their starter candies. But because those students will be studying online, we're also going to put an envelope with a few other foods inside of it but they're gonna be sealed and they're not to open them yet because it'll be week two, week three, and week four in class. And what the students will be given direction is, so it could be a little envelope of summer savory and inside of it will be a recipe. So they'll be able to go and experiment with that in their own country. And then Jackie, can you imagine when you're teaching and Marcella and Richard, that on that class, that following week, everybody will have been able to taste it mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, and right. try that. Yeah, great idea. <laughs> and when we were in David's shop yesterday, we kept picking up envelopes of all these suppliers that had lightweight things. Mm. So we're going to, Rosalind will be working with David and some of the suppliers from all across Atlantic Canada so that we can get things that we would be able to send out and allow, because it's the one way, and I see a smiling fairy, we want to be able to connect with our students and, and be able to offer that experience while they're studying online for the next six or eight months till they can fly here. So at least that they can taste Atlantic Canada a little bit yeah. and we can bring it into our lessons. Like, like, the, like the, cal the Christmas calendar things with the candies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love it. I love it.
have it. We'll have to do it. Euro Center's Advent calendar. You just gave us a great idea. <laughs> Helen, this 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 daughter, she's a marketing genius. That's a really good idea. I really, yeah. really like that idea. That's, that is very unique. That will sell. <laughs> well, I'm you know, sure. if you want students to experience us and you guys as the teachers. You know, it's really interesting if you look at it right now, there's four teachers on this call. And, and, and I know Fairy's kind of smiling like, hey, look at all the extra lessons I'm getting today. <laughs> um, but, you know, you guys, it's how, if we can give you gifts that help you connect with the students and help that lesson be a bit more engaging. And all of you have been teaching online and you know that you're all missing that connection with your student. So, and I know you are, and, and you know, that's heartbreaking to not have that. And I know David experiences it because he's, he's at every event been able, and he's not been able to connect with his customers. So if this is a way that you can bring a nice taste and, 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 and then be able to sit and, and be able to go, now I know, can you smell it? And we're going, yeah, I can smell it. <laughs> you have to think of foods which smell like, like, sort of places in a way like like seasons like what what smells like the fall in nova scotia for example well maple of course. but things like that yeah squash here this is from my garden as well yeah wow. <laughs> so awesome. we're we're really excited to be doing this through the fall and i'll end on this and say thank you to everybody um and it's pretty good because we're only just over an hour and we were probably a few minutes getting zoomed in at the beginning. So we're pretty doing okay here. Um, we're always going to keep within an hour because we want to honor people's times too. Um, but the fall is one of the most incredible seasons there is in Atlantic Canada for eating and it's a big harvest time. The other thing that we do want to show is what is growing in different places around the world. And our goal is to help people when they're coming here to Canada, it'll be fun through the winter when there's lots of snow here but we will continue to share the warm recipes and the things that are home here. And I know Jacqueline has very much been enjoying and to say that while she's in Vietnam right now, she can say, come in and see what's going on. You know, here's, here's who we are. And nothing's more important than the students to meet their teachers. It's about you guys being real. It's about you making a Pisco sour. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, and, and saying those fun things. And, you know, Donna is going to be doing some Facebook lives from restaurants in Lunenburg. And, yeah. and, and Jacqueline, you're going to be able to be doing some of those too soon. So yeah. we're going to find ways to engage with around the world until they can get to us. But that's the way we see it. Okay, great. Sound good? Well, yeah. yeah, great. <laughs> Take care. Have a nice one. Okay. Bye. Happy Sunday. Thanks for Bye. 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 Au revoir. See you. <laughs> Ciao. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us.